What if you could find brand new worlds right here on Earth, where anything is possible? Same planet, different dimension. I found the gateway. The Rewatch Podcast presents The Sliders Rewatch, dedicated to the series Sliders on Fox and Sci-Fi Channel. Join us each week as we continue crossing the einstein rosendalski Bridge and find ourselves in strange new worlds. Email your thoughts on each episode to the Rewatch Podcast at gmail.com. Join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Rewatch Podcast or on Twitter at Rewatch Podcast. <laughs> And welcome back to the Rewatch Podcast and our Sliders Rewatch. I'm Corey. And I'm your love monkey. Marry me? <laughs> Maybe. <After that. laughs> Ooh, hey, look at that, guys. <laughs> okay, thank you for joining us, everyone. We're, of course, here discussing two more episodes of Sliders. This week it is Genesis and Profits and Loss. But before we get into it, we have... A little bit of by the way. Just a little bit. I was thinking about this. I was listening to the uh, the older episode about uh, the episode Breeder. And throughout the series, we've had Quinn. And he's uh, when he's had to kill, like he did, uh, like he thought he did back in the uh, Old West ep- episode, mm. he was very like remorseful. He felt bad about it. Whenever there's a decision like that, he struggles with it. And he feels terrible when he's had to take a life. But... You know, they they haven't done a very good job with Maggie in uh in you know, season three. And like she killed a lot in the breeder and it never had any repercussions at all. There was no like her remorseful about it or anything like it, just because, you know, she just wasn't she wasn't herself, quote. But still, I thought they, they could have done more with that and made humanized her a little bit, I thought. Yeah, I think we touched on it briefly, but we didn't really right. get into it and she really has no remorse. They they don't even really bring it up. So exactly, yeah, typical. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little thing that I thought of when I was listening. I was like, oh yeah, we should have we should have talked a little more about that. But yeah, so there you go. A little bit more, by the way. All right, well, let's get into our first episode today. We are kicking off season four. Season four. We're here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to see some familiar faces showing yes. up, writing and directing, but we're going to see a lot of new faces. Uh, in the directing and writing side. So the first episode here is Genesis, written by David Peckinpah, returning, mm, sticking yes. with it over on Sci-Fi, <laughs> and directed by Reza Badia. This originally yes. aired June 8th of 1998. Move and I'll cut you to pieces. Your friend here will break our fall. It's okay, Martha. They're the ones that Wade and Remy told us about. Just chill. Damn it, Otis. I told you, nobody gets down here. He didn't have a choice. I'm getting real tired of people always pointing guns at me. Put it down. You first! I'm not gonna ask you again. Uh, if you guys are gonna shoot each other, why don't you just let Otis and I get out of the way? Are you Maggie? Yeah. Yeah, Wade said you were a tough bitch. Yeah, I bet she did. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Quinn. Do you know where our friends are? Not for certain. The Chromax hit us hard and fast. Some were killed. Your friends weren't in the pile. You have to figure they were taken. All right. You two look pretty ragged, so why don't you sit down? Otis, go crack a jug of water. When did the Chromax invade? Not long after your friends got here. They hit the big cities first. Casualties were awesome. San Francisco? Fell right after LA. It's where his mom lives. I'm sorry to hear that. You've never seen weapons like theirs. Freaking spaceships shooting lasers, the whole sci-fi enchilada. Within a few days, they were in complete control. So we dug in here. There are other pockets of resistance, but... But all we can do is just piss them off. So much for friendly extraterrestrials. (laughs) 
After three months of random sliding, Quinn has finally managed to adjust the timer to properly track Wade and Remy's wormhole back to Earth Prime. Unfortunately, things have changed quite a bit, the biggest being that the cro have long since invaded Earth Prime and taken over there, another casualty in the ongoing cro human wars. Quinn and Maggie find out that Wade and Remy went missing, most likely taken prisoner by the cro The human resistance manages to help locate Remy, and together with the resistance leader Marta, they stage a jailbreak. While Remy is unbelieving at first due to the mind games the cro have played with him, he eventually accepts that Quinn has returned and they make a break for it. Unfortunately, Quinn gets captured and is amazingly reunited with his mother in a holding cell who reveals to him that he is actually from a parallel Earth, his real parents having dropped him to his mother during the original cro Wars many years ago, planning to come back and get him when the humans won the war. It is also revealed that Quinn has a brother who was, like Quinn, hidden on a parallel world for his safety. After a second jailbreak, Quinn, Maggie, and Remy decide that they must find the brother and Quinn's true parents' homeworld so that they can get the weapons developed there that will allow them to beat the cro on Earth Prime. Remy, it's me. It's Quinn. Leave me alone, you lying maggot. Hey, man, we came to get you, buddy. Hey, man. Okay, we're here to get you, Remy. Come on, man, look at me. I'm your man. It's me, Quinn, cue ball. No! I'm here to you. You are eating freaks. Listen to me, man. Listen to me. You and Wade slid out of the last world ahead of us. We were going to follow your photon trail back here to Earth Prime. Now, I know, no matter what they did to you, there is no way you would have ever divulged that information. So the only way I could know those details is if I was your man. It's me, Remy. It's cue ball. Where's Wade? I don't know. We were taken together, but after we got here, they split us up. Then I heard that they they had taken her to another prison. Damn. It's okay, Gwen. We'll find her. We'll bring her back. You have to believe that. Okay, so let's get into a bit of trivia. All right, so in the beginning, and this is something that you you mentioned too, I, I saw in the notes there, the beginning with the bikers, they were supposed to be actually real Native Americans originally. They were supposed to get real Native Americans, you know, with the full regalia and everything on the motorcycles, but it was too expensive to hire a whole bunch of Native Americans. So <laughs> they said, well, let's just get some fat bikers in war paint. Let's do that. That's cheap. So wow. That's what, that's what they did, yes. Uh, yeah, there you go. So that that's why they had the spears and, and all the other stuff going on. It was supposed to be a different, little slightly different opening. The original script, and this is, oh, this was bad. This is bad. You know, this is written by David Peckinpah. And the original script, if you remember, uh, the hacker guy says to Quinn, you know, live long and thump butt. In the original script, it said in there, at this point, do the Star Wars salute. And it was like, oh, the Star Wars salute. Really? Really? Come on. <laughs> you know what he was he was talking about? The Vulcan salute from Star Trek. You know, it's like not wanting to start a battle between the wars and the Trek, but come on, David Peckinpah. That's the really? worst. <laughs> That's that you lost so much geek cred there. I mean, you've lost tons because of the show, but I'm just saying, <laughs> a little bit more right there. The original idea uh, in the script was to hide the timer in the resistance base instead of taking it with them. They were going to hide it there, which would have been a good idea. And then uh, after the cro hits on Maggie in the uh, truck when they're going into the place, uh, there's a little scene where that cro and the other cro are talking. And the one cro says, I can't believe how you were drooling over her. And he says to the effect of, well, she had beautiful eyes. I would have enjoyed sucking them out of her skull. It's like, uh, okay, well, there you go. Grizzly. A little a little flavor there for the, the Cro-Mags. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It's all right, but it's kind of gross. This is going to sound crazy, but I swear to you it's true, no matter how fantastic it is. I promise your parents, I'd tell you when you came of age, but I was so afraid of losing you. My parents, what, what are you talking about? Listen to me. I, 
I'm not your birth mother. Your parents left you with Dad and me to raise when you were just a baby. They were our doubles, Quinn, from another Earth. So you're saying that my birth parents are from a parallel world? Ah, oh, this is crazy. This is some crazy Cro-Mag mind game. No, it's the truth. I swear it. They, they gave me this. Ah. Uh. Here, press this to your forehead when you're alone. They said your questions will be answered. Who are you? Why are you doing this? What's with the lies, huh? What's with the lies, huh? I couldn't have loved you more if you were my own flesh, Quinn. Please forgive me if that love blinded me. Your parents came back to Earth to get you two years later. But your father and I hid you. We couldn't bear to part with you. We loved you so much. All right. Well, let's get into our discussion of Genesis. All right. All right. So episode opens with Maggie and Quinn. And uh, as we were saying in the trivia there, Native American bikers in what <laughs> appears to be the Old West. Right. Yeah. It's too bad that they didn't go with the, you know, spend the extra money for the actual Native Americans. Because that would have been a neat thing. I thought that would be a neat thing. Like modern you know native americans on motorcycles opposed to horses yeah well you know when i sit down to watch the episode i always open up a google doc you know mm -hmm. you and i always share a google doc so we can share our notes and uh, i have that open and i go to write that you know they're being chased by bikers when mm -hmm. i suddenly realized that it's supposed to be native american <laughs> right yes but, yeah, the, it is a confusing scene because they don't sell that Native American aspect. And as you, no. you know, mentioned, they're not actually Native American people. They're, <laughs> they actually look more like bikers doing a bad yeah, impression. Yeah. Exactly. They went down to the local bar and said, hey, we need some guys. Can you do this for us? We'll give you beer money. I think they're pretty speedy in sort of getting the story to where it needs to be. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, because they've got to follow continuity from the last season, having the cliffhanger for the last episode at Fox coming into mm -hmm. what sci-fi wants from them. So they've got to follow the continuity, but they've got to get the story to where, I guess, the people at sci-fi want it to go, you know? Right. And I think they're pretty speedy. So, you know, here in the opening, we get rapid fire information. It's been three months mm -hmm. since Quinn and Maggie slid to a different world, not Earth Prime. Quinn has been trying to fix the timer to track the wormhole back, and he's finally got it. He's, you know, they're running, he's tinkering with it still. The time is still counting down, so, you know, he's made that last adjustment. Finally, they're heading back to Earth Prime. And he opens up the, the wormhole. And it's a new one. We get this yes. new, weird, blue-looking vortex <laughs> instead of the old uh, watery-looking one. The vortex is fine. What, what The problem I has when they actually slid out of it, oh, it, was, it looks so bad. I mean, they, it's like they were sitting on air, you know? <laughs> it looks like they're sitting there, and they're just falling out of the vortex like on an invisible couch or something. I was like, what the heck? Why couldn't they just do it like normal? Yeah, it's, your sci-fi channel's not known for its stellar effects when it comes to its <laughs> TV shows. Exactly. So they do go a bit cheaper on the effects, mm -hmm. even the basic ones like the Vortex. So yeah, oh, what can you do? This is, if we want to keep getting sliders, this is what we're going to go with. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and they make it, they make it back to Earth Prime and they follow continuity that Maggie can't breathe. Right. For a few minutes at least. Yeah. Again, <laughs> they sort of try to steer clear of uh, these plot holes, you know, try to explain them quickly and get rid of yeah. them. Yeah. So, yeah, she comes back around. We get a quick line. You know, all the sliding must have changed your lungs or something like that. All the different worlds. <laughs> you seem yes. to be okay now. It's That's like, gone. Yeah, it's like, all right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> but they're taking the time to at least address it before yeah. they get rid of it. So right. it's quite speedy. And, you know, I was watching the clock. It was the 15-minute mark of this episode that they had gotten through all this stuff broke out remy and then the story is going to unfold from there right and uh of course the big thing here is that they're going with chromags they have picked the chromags as one of the best villains that have been established so far mm -hmm. and we're going to go with <laughs> chromag invasion story i'm kind of interested in it i'm interested in looking back because i i 
I told you, I've always rewatched and I've always stopped after season three. So I remember seeing season four maybe twice in the past 20 years. So it, it's it's kind of new. It's, it's, it's like I remember some vague things, but I don't remember everything. So, yeah, I'm interested to, to see how it all goes and how it – because I don't remember all of it, exactly how it worked. I'm the same way. I don't think they really put out like a box set of sliders on DVD. Mm -hmm. So – as right. they released, you know, one after the other, I was buying them. And they mm. finally got around to putting out season four, you know, maybe three, four years back here in Australia. And I watched right. it then. And um, that's pretty much the only time I revisited yeah. season four. I'd seen seasons one, two, and three many times. But, you know, the thing actually that um, threw me off was that I thought they got straight into... Colin Mallory. Yeah, I did too. Actually, my recollection was, yeah. I was super surprised that these first two episodes don't get to that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so that's an interesting aspect of it. What I was wondering, and this goes back to continuity again, is who do you think had the implant then? Because Remy and Wade went back to Earth Prime, and then the Cro-Mags invaded, so... Theoretically, it's either Remy or Wade, don't you think? Honestly, I'd forgotten all about it. Exactly. <laughs> we yeah. did bring it up in the episode, the, that mm -hmm. first Pro Mag episode. So, yep. mm, I would like to think that, I mean, I hate to say it, but I'd like to think it was probably Wade at this yeah, point. Yeah, I was thinking Wade too. Because of the fact that she's not there and Remy's going to keep sliding with them. Are they going to keep tracking them? Exactly. I, I don't remember to tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah I, I was thinking Wade as well, you know? So there you go. We have, well, we have our theory yeah. on, the, on the implant at least. Yeah. So they head to the Chandler. Chandler, of course. That's where they always stay. Yeah. And I was thinking, <laughs> why didn't Remy and Wade go home to San Francisco? Oh, yeah. That's something too. Yeah. Why didn't they go home? Yeah. Yeah. Instead, they got jobs at the Chandler and then the crime eggs invaded. Well, maybe they did. Well, I, I'm, I'm assuming that they probably called home you know and maybe went for you know a visit but decided to stay in la in case quinn and uh, maggie came through that's, that's what true. i'm assuming well at the same time they could have gone home to see their families i'm sure quinn would have called them <laughs> oh yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. Up there. exactly. Right. hey guys we're finally here in la that's true the thing that i was like making a joke about there was though is the, it's the chandler now and it used to be it was the motel 12 and then it was the dominion the, uh, the Dominion, <laughs> and it wasn't it something else uh, in in the last season. I thought it was a different one in the last season, and then now we have the Chandler. I know we commented on the fact that it was now the Chandler once they right. had encountered Logan Sinclair and was going to start landing in L.A. So it just it threw me off when oh it didn't throw me off it just annoyed me when Quinn said yeah we always stay there and it's like it. You don't always stay there. No, no, you stayed at the <laughs> Motel 12 there for a while. <laughs> exactly. And you notice uh, also with this season now, we've got all new looks for everyone in this season. We've got uh, Quinn with a new haircut because he was starting to get a little shaggy towards mm -hmm. the end of last season. Mm -hmm. We've got Maggie with her new do, darker hair, uh, bangs showing now. And then we got Remy who's, who's, who looks different because he's missing the mustache. Yes. Yes. I was like, I remember when I first saw it, I was like, something about him doesn't look right. Oh, it's a mustache. The mustache is gone. I'm so used to that. <laughs> yeah, well, he's been in a Cro-Mag prison for three months. So. Well, there you go. <laughs> and then you got the Cro-Mags, who I, I don't see many people talking about this. You know, like when I look at the messages and time boards, when I look at the sliders.tv forums, not too many people talk about how the Cro-Mags look really different from Invasion. Because they do. They look really different. Yeah. I mean, they've gone with the weird lumpy face. Yeah. Lumpy face, bigger ears. It's, yeah. They kind of had like sort of mohawk ponytails or something in the, yeah, in the original exactly. one. Here they're pretty much bald. There's a couple that they're have kind really of straggly bald, hair. Yeah. And um, they're also shapeshifters. I know, yes. like, they set up that they sort of like are masters of mind manipulation. So I guess they're kind of expanding on that. Here in this yeah, episode. the shape shifting is new. That's something that that was like, oh, well, this is different. Yeah, so you know, I don't, I don't, I don't mind it. I, I think it's interesting that they they picked this one villain to sort mm -hmm. of expand on. Right. They haven't really said much about the Chrome Mags beyond that one episode. So no, it had potential to be expanded upon. So why not? Yeah, you know? I'm glad we're going with it. So they're at the Chandler, and uh, Quinn and Maggie meet up with uh, this guy Otis and Marta. Yes, it is Marta, right? I, I was it kinda, is Marta. I was confused. <laughs> I think sometimes they were calling her Martha, <laughs> uh, and other times it's Mar Marta or Marda. 
and I was like, yeah, I, no, I, I got I Marta. <laughs> <laughs> I landed on Marta. So they were, you know, they conveniently enough also worked at the Chandler with Remy and Wade. So right. they've got a lot of information about uh, going to get them, and they decide to go and break out Remy from this re-education center. Right. As they call it. I also love that Marta called out knowing uh, that uh, Maggie was who you know, who she thought she was because Wade <laughs> referred to her as a tough bitch. So oh, I bet you re- must be Maggie. <laughs> yeah, tough bitch. I bet she referred to her as more than just that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, you know, this is really just moving along quickly. Like I said, it's it 15 does, yeah. minutes and they've busted... Uh, Remy out of this re-education center and mm-hmm. man Clavon is killing it in these scenes yeah. I have to say man he is awesome yeah he was great in this whole whole episode his scenes were really really good like when yeah when Quinn first comes in and like he's listening to Quinn try to explain you know that I that he is Quinn like if you watch his eyes and his just oh the way his mouth quivering and everything he's just did a great job Like, you felt like he was just, like, scared as hell to believe it, you know, but he wanted to believe it. It's like, oh, it was really good. They kill off Otis pretty quickly. Yeah. I think it was supposed to maybe be a bit impactful because we did kind of get a fair bit of information about the guy, and then they just killed him. No, Otis was wearing – he was wearing red because I didn't notice. (laughs) Yes, yeah. He had all – he had, like, a red bandana, (laughs) red shirt, red pants. Like, it was all red, and I'm like, wow, that's, like – Red shirt to the max. They should have done, like, they should have made that a thing. Like, anyone who dies in sliders would be wearing red. That would be awesome. <laughs> a little tribute, you know? Nice little Star Trek tribute. A nice tribute, not like the typical season three tribute. Yeah, exactly. Um, they go to see this uh, hacker dude as well. Yes. Who uh, tells them about Remy, you know, before they, they bust him out. He was pretty cool. He kind of reminded me of, like, uh, the lone gunman or something like that from... X-Files. He annoyed the hell out of me. Yeah, I mean, it was a cheesy, you know? cheap version of the oh Lone Gunman. God. Like, he's like, get your heart pumping in the more nine, you know? And then he's like looking at Maggie and he's like, I love you, marry me, be my love monkey. I'm like, oh, God, you are just so, it's just like, ugh. I could, I, I re- like, that's the first thing I wrote about. I'm like, oh, my God, hacker dude, hate, you know? It's like, it's just so over the top. And well, at least one good thing came out of this. And this was delving deeper into the crow mags and how their operation works. Because, mm-hmm. you know, they say, oh, can you really hack it? I mean, isn't it all in crow mag? And he said, well, you right. know, they've got people doing their work for them. so Which makes sense. Yeah, you know, and we do get into this whole thing of human collaborators and, um, you know, the holding cells and how they actually treat people once they've invaded like what do they do with the people do they just kill them all or you know what do they do it right. um it was cool and especially because quinn was captured trying to bust out remy and they interrogate him yes and that was like really full on and that's where we get all the thing about you know how they can project the illusion of having human faces you know their, mm-hmm. their uniforms their military uniforms were very like russian or maybe even like a chinese mm-hmm. kind of uh military uniform so they're very mm-hmm. hearkening back to something like world war Two or something like that that's what i was thinking like the the like nazi uniforms i was thinking i saw mm-hmm. like oh Bit you Nazi know? there, yeah. So, um, I, you know, I really liked all that stuff, the the real in-depth look at a Chromag operation. I was going to put this later, but might as well talk about it now because this is the, the hacker dude, you know, he, he, finds, he found Remy, but he said that it's likely Wade was sent to a breeder camp and then the Chromag that's interrogating uh, Quinn confirms that and talking about how, you know, she's in this breeder camp and, and you know, she, he hears once you had Mag, you never go back. That whole thing just, it sickens me. Can I just say that? It just, uh, that whole, I do not like the idea of, of what they've, uh, what they did with that character, what they did with Wade's character. I don't think it needed to happen. They didn't need to say that she was sent to a breeder camp where she would just be spending the rest of her days, um, basically popping out human, uh, Cro-Mag hybrid babies. I think that was just, it was unnecessary. Not something that they needed to do. They could have said she was just being held somewhere captive in another camp. And that would have been fine. That would have been good. Would have given the character some dignity, at least. Yeah, we know that they have like prisons on unpopulated worlds and stuff like mm-hmm. that. They could have just taken in one of those. You know, she's exactly she's being held captive off world somewhere. Yeah, I mean, you're is, right. Yeah, yeah, this is just David Peckinpah just 
you know, twisting the knife further in, you know, and just like, uh, it, it cause from the, what the story is from what I understand is, is that Sabrina asked, she said she made a, an ultimatum. It's either, you know, it's either Kari or me. And they went with her. They went with Kari because of the sex appeal thing. And so it's, it's, it's like, like we said, if you played the game with David Peckinpah and did what you're supposed to do, he was fine. But if you went against him, he was going to come after you. And that's that's what he did with this line that didn't need to be in there. And just totally, like I said, just didn't need to happen for this character. Like, I felt bad. I When I first watched this episode back in the day, I remember hearing that and I thought, oh, well, I mean, surely they'll save her before anything bad happens. But no, they never do, and th- her character is just sentenced to this eternal damnation. You know, it's like, oh, I, so yeah, I, I definitely did not like it. Yeah, definitely not a fan of that. It's a terrible outcome for Wade. You know, a character yes. that has been with us for three seasons, and she's just thrown away into a uh, a breeder camp for for exactly. Cro Mag human hybrids. It's not fair. But, uh, ma'am, that's what it is. I, I'm hoping that they're not going to bring it up too much as the episodes go forward. I know we're going to get yeah. into an episode that is about uh, a woman who was in a breeder camp. Right. Um, which I think is uh, it's going to be interesting from that aspect to actually delve into what it was like to be in there. Right. But, uh, yeah, yeah, leaving Wade in there was... Bleh. No, yeah. not cool. <laughs> exactly. Not a cool outcome for the character at all. So now I had a question. They bust out Remy. Why did they not just bust out everyone who was prisoners there? Why not, like, use that key to get them all out? Yeah, that's true. I mean, when, once you've got everybody out, then you've got a mob behind you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> An army to help fight. Like, I'm looking at all those other people, and they're, all the other people are getting up in their cells as they see these humans come through. I'm like... I, I feel bad for him because they're like, hey, what about us? You know, we're we're here too. Just use the key right here. We're right here. <laughs> oh, it's too bad. Yeah, especially because we're seeing human collaborators, you know, these prison guards, and they're smacking people mm-hmm. around and things oh, like that. Yeah. So you just like, there are dreadful human beings in this world who mm-hmm. are collaborating. So why yeah. not get the ones who are in prison and have them come and fight with you? Remy, of course, gets all heated about needing to go and get Quinn. They left him behind, mm-hmm. quote unquote. That's how he sees it. He's very emotional. Of course he would be. And Clavon yeah. is just continuing to nail these scenes, man. I'm yeah, loving it. When scene. Maggie has to, yeah, when Maggie has to sit down with him and and they talk about waiting, getting a plan together, getting people together, we can go out and save him that way, you know. And he reflects on, you know, his time in there, losing Wade, and man, I just love it. couldn't save her, yeah. And of course, the fact that the Chrome Mags had been messing with his head as right. well. He, You know, he says, you know, I don't know if you can trust me. I don't know if I can go out there with you because they've been in my brain for three months doing exactly. God knows what, you know. Mm-hmm. So amazing. I think it's the best part of the episode is those uh, solid Remy moments. Yeah, definitely. He's he's the star actor in this one. But uh, you know, back in the in the Cro-Mag prison, we get more of the human collaborator prison guards being assholes. Right. Yes. They're pretty <laughs> rough. And they're walking past. They've got Quinn, like they've arrested him or something. They're dragging him along. And in the background, they're just smacking around an old woman. I, mean, I didn't is, see that. I didn't notice that. Brutal. Because, you know, <laughs> Quinn does that normal thing where he sees someone getting beat up and he's just like, hey, leave right. her alone. Leave her alone. It's an old woman. And they are just like smacking her down and dragging her oh, away. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Now I do remember that part. I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, it, <laughs> why did it have to be an old woman? Is that just to really show that these people are brutal? Right. The shock value. Yeah. But uh, in the prison, Quinn gets reunited with his mother. Yes. Yes. The real mother. <laughs> yes. The real mother. She comes the back. The original actress. We're going to get into something in a minute that irks me, but proper mm-hmm. actress is back and she reveals that Quinn is from another world, a parallel world. And she gives him this micro dot mm-hmm. that she digs out of her arm, which is, ooh. It was a bit much. What did you think of this scene with uh, Quinn's mother and the uh, the micro dot? I I think it was well done. I, I like seeing her. I like having her back again. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was a good scene. How he doesn't believe her at first, and she just doesn't understand why he doesn't believe her because she hasn't had that much experience with Chrome Mags. I'm believe, I'm guessing. And, you know, whereas he's been, you know, privy to the whole mind manipulation and stuff like that. So he knows. And it, it was cool. It was well done, I thought. Yeah, it, you know, it took me a minute to think, like, why she would have to dig that micro dot out of her arm. Like, because mm-hmm. she says, like, her double and, and Quinn's father's double came when he was two years old, 
gave right. them Quinn and then left them with that micro dot. And I was like, did they implant that in her arm or did she hide it there? Like, why would she I, hide it in her arm? I understand that yeah. it's there because she had to be able to give it to him and assumedly the cro wouldn't let her walk around with like a pendant or something to hide it in. Exactly. So yeah, it had that's... to be on her body or in her body somewhere. Yeah, that's the way it's always with her, you know. And so I would assume that they, that uh, her, the doubles probably did it being maybe more advanced, you know, techno- technology wise. So mm. I would assume they did it. But it was a bit gruesome her digging that out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Even Quinn was like, oh, Ugh, what are you why? doing, mom? <laughs> 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 now, speaking of their quote, doubles. Uh, they're not doubles. No. no. This, this, is, this is what really irks me. Because <laughs> yes. when he uses the micro dot, they use a different actor for the yes. mother and father. Yes. Two people we'd never seen before. Exactly. Why not cast the mother again? She's right there. Yeah. <laughs> she was just there. Why not use her again? Exactly. You know? I mean, I, I know I hate it when they hire a different actor, actress right. for the mother. They've done it before and then always yes. going back to the original mother. If they weren't going to get that actress to play the mother for this storyline, then why mm. use her at all? Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Why not just completely recast her? I yeah. Know. See, the whole thing with the mother, like we had the, the Bizarro Quinn's mother in that one episode. And originally they had Linda Henning as the original Amanda Mallory. And then she moved away, I think, during the second season or something like that. And so they had to use the other actress who played Bizarro Quinn's mother. And then when they came back, when the, when the production moved to L.A., that's where Linda Henry had moved. So they were able to get her back again for that. So that explains why they used a different actress for the mother before. But it doesn't explain why they didn't use the mother for the double in this whole thing. Because she's a decent actress. I know. Two different actors playing his mother in one in episode. episode. It's, it's yes. ridiculous. <laughs> yes. It makes no sense. You know, they could have just said that, you know, your parents were just some other people. Exactly. It didn't have to be a double. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Just nonsensical. Yeah. I don't get it. And it, and she has a different name, too. I, I I don't know if they mentioned... Did they mention it in this episode? Or I, I may have read it somewhere that she, she's not Amanda Mallory. She's actually a different... Uh, has a different first name. I never even knew her first name. I, You know, we've always just called her Quinn's mom. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, Quinn's mom. <laughs> You're more important to us than that. But you know. <laughs> in any case, we have a new mother and father. Yeah. And I don't like them. They kind of look shifty. Well, this whole scene reminded me very much, which uh, is, is kind of funny, of Lois and Clark, the new adventures of Superman, when Clark finds out about his heritage being in Krypton, where he sees a vision from a globe, you know, that tells him all about Krypton. It was like the glowing people in front of him. Just it's very similar to this micro dot uh, hologram. No, I didn't even think of that. But you're right. It is a very Superman-esque kind of mm-hmm. trope in a way, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a messages in time about that, too. But, uh, you know, aside from that, they also kill off Martyr as well. Which is fine. We didn't really get to know her very yeah, well. Yeah, we'll just kill off all these people that we've introduced in this episode. I mean, really, right. uh, yeah, are they going to come and slide with them? Probably not. Right. At this point, we're only with the three of them, Remy, Quinn, and May. So that's changing up the dynamic a bit, only three people. Exactly, yep. And yeah, are they Yeah, are they really going to take Marta or someone with them? Obviously, also getting to this brother yes. side of things, which we don't know yet. But his name is Colin. Right. And they're going to go and track him down. And like I said, I'd, I was really surprised that this first episode wasn't Colin or even the even second the next one. one. Yeah. yeah. I, I really thought that, if, okay, they've set up the Crow Mags in this first one. So the next one will be the Colin Mallory introduction. Nope. Well, yeah, they give him the coordinates, don't they? give him the coordinates to find his brother. Yeah, he says something about n- not knowing quite how to program coordinates right. into the timer. So, I don't know. I guess that's what we're going to get into as the episodes go on. But, I honestly, at this point, I can't even remember what episode Colin Mallory comes in. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, and the other big bit of information that we get from, from Quinn's parents is that they were fighting a war with the cro Mm-hmm. So Quinn surmises that since they came back for him, apparently, but you know his mother and father had 
hidden him away because they couldn't bear to part with him, give him back to his birth parents, that they must have actually won that war, that they must have come up with some sort of weapon to defeat exactly. the Chromax and banish them from their planet. So mm -hmm. that's another thing. Not only does Quinn want to get his brother, but he feels that if he finds his brother, then he'll find his home Earth coordinates and therefore get the weapon to save Earth Prime. So... Yeah, I, th I think it's an interesting setup for the series. Definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, I think we're going to get into some interesting bits, uh, whether or not the series as a whole is going to be good, but... Right, right. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, for me, like, uh, well, before I even say that, let me let me comment on uh, what, what they call the, uh, the old message boards. Danger Bunny, Maggie seems she, she's much better in this episode and going forward she seems a lot like she just seems like she's gotten better more comfortable with the role and they've changed it up a little bit she's not as aggressive as she was in season three she seems a lot softer now i think there was only one point where carrie was acting really took me out and that was the final scene of them deciding to keep sliding Mm -hmm. And she takes Remy by the arm and she says, I don't trust you two out there alone. So, you know, I'm <laughs> with you. And I was like, oh, that was, that was a terrible eye delivery. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's I mean, she's definitely not up to the caliber of like the, the people that we've had, you know, uh, Serena Lloyd and uh, John Reese davies But she's much better than she was in that third season. I mean, it, this aired, what, a year, more than a year after yeah, uh, there was like a year in between or something like that. That last episode was in April of '97, mm -hmm. and we're picking up here in June of '98. So right. over so, a year. So she's had time to get some lessons and, and such. <laughs> and now it's time for another episode of Yes, Ma'am, with Maggie Beckett. Quinn, slow up! You're gonna shake me to death before you save my life. This has been another episode of Yes Ma'am, Maggie Beckett. All right, well, let's get into our second episode today. The episode is titled Profits and Loss, written by Bill Dial and directed by Mark Sobel. This originally aired also on June 8th of 1998, so I guess they did a big oh. two-parter to sort of get people riled up for uh, some know, more sliders coming back. I had not realized that, and when I was going to the messages in time, I was wondering why everyone was reviewing both of these episodes together. I'm like, wow, they just <laughs> they, they put them both together for some reason in, the, in their reviews. I didn't realize they both aired on the same date. There you go. They believe that life here is just to prepare you for life on the next world. Yeah, that's pretty much what I was taught in church. The faithful will be gathered up on the day of accounting. Same again, day of judgment, day of accounting. So what do they say about the unfaithful? <laughs> I don't see any. It seems they all agree that the way of the Oracle is the way to go. I mean, the whole country follows one set of rules, no denominations, uh, no political parties, no crazy guy holed up in Idaho with automatic <laughs> weapons. Well, there are the rats. It's what they call the rationalist party. The Oracle apparently tolerates disagreement with their way as long as the rats keep it on a low flame. Even have debates on television, naturally, the Oracle always wins. <laughs> so is it a religion? Is it a lifestyle? What? Near as I can figure, it's pretty much all those. On Earth Prime, we had a right-wing political movement that wanted to establish a system based on family values. Yeah, they have family values. Obviously, on this world, those people won that argument. According to this, they've got a lot of rules. No real freedom of speech without Oracle approval. No abortion, no sex without Oracle license. Right dress and behavior at all times. This sounds like a weekend at Mom Miranda's. Come on, let's just keep moving. So I don't understand. How did the people let this happen? They've been paying attention when they should have been. You don't vote, you get what you deserve. Yeah, well, at least they have technology. Cars, airplanes, CD players. Schools must be pretty good. It's all controlled by the Oracle. No social sciences. They call that stuff humanism, and they teach nothing but creation science. That explains demon Darwin. No Big Bang, no relativity, no black holes, no chaos theory. But if that portal is a sliding machine, they're going against all their own rules. Our trio lands in a world where religion controls just about everything from TV, schools, and hospitals to normally personal decisions regarding sex and abortion, but they are opposed by an underground resistance. The slide-in is witnessed by a man named Cadmus, a high-ranking official in this theologically run government who alerts authorities to the slider's presence. Our group is ushered into assembly by a woman named Jane, where they learn that people believe life on this world is simply to prepare them for the next world and are chosen to be welcomers, people who will 
will pass through a portal to another world to make it ready for others to come through in the future. Quinn decides he needs to check the portal machine out, hoping to find something he can borrow or use to adjust their own timer. Unfortunately, all they find is that the machine is actually an incinerator, and rather than sliding to another world, the welcomers are burned to death. Their investigation is interrupted by Cadmus and company who take their timer, questioning their motives and detaining them in jail, but luckily the Rad Rats save them before they can be chemically reconfigured or brainwashed. The Sliders make a deal to help the Rad Rats with their tech needs if they help them with retrieving the timer, but the rescue plan goes awry and our team, along with Samson, are captured and scheduled to be the next to traverse in the incinerator. Cadmus reveals himself to be a Rad Rat sympathizer and returns the timer so that the Sliders can slide out under the guise of traversing to the next world as welcomers. After sliding out, they use the timer's ability to return, something that has never been done before on this world, thereby shaking up the people's belief in the Oracle and strengthening the rationalist cause. Forgive my rudeness. My name is Gareth, and I am the chief oracle for the Los Angeles area, and this is my counselor, Cadmus. Your sudden appearance has caused us to forget our manners. So, I've told you my name. Don't you want to tell me yours? Hi, I'm Quinn Mallory. This is Rembrandt Brown, and this is Maggie Beckett. <clears throat> We're from out of town. Right. Mm. <laughs> so it would seem. The real question is, how far out of town? Uh, uh, Oregon, actually. Y the interior. You know, we're, this is our first trip to L.A. Vacation? Well, you, you could say that. Have you been to Oracle World? Not yet, but it's on the list. Right. <laughs> the World in Six Days is playing at the IMAX Theater. It is really something. And the Dark Age Dungeon Ride? <laughs> There's new music this year by John Tesh. I love him. So if, uh... If we could just get our little communicator back, uh, we'll mosey on over to Oracle World and uh, enjoy ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm sorry, but um, we're gonna have to detain you for for a little while. Why are we being arrested? What charges? Charges. <laughs> I am so sorry. I thought you were paying attention. You're completely unknown to the authorities. You have no identification, you're vagrants, and you're in the possession of a scientific device. First three are misdemeanors, the last is a felony. Take them. Hey! Whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute, what have you done? Ah! What is that thing? Okay, so let's uh, check out the trivia here. All right, so there's some more with Jane when she's introducing the leaders um, when they first go into assembly, and she makes a comment that they cut that says uh, how sighted leaders, so Cadmus and uh, Gareth, how they can actually make laws. So they're not just like, you know, the the preachers and whatnot and the, the holy leaders. They can actually make legal laws. Um, I thought that was a, a neat uh, a neat thing. I don't mm. know why they cut that out because that, yeah. that, that would be neat to have in there. That makes sense. Yeah, just a bit more in-depth of how this uh, legal system works. Exactly. Um, there was more of a tour when Quinn and uh, Maggie and Remy are being taken to the Rad Rat uh, headquarters. For some reason, in the original script, they went on for, I don't know, half a page or so about all the different tunnels that they were taking the sliders through and all the things that you would see. And, like, it definitely just cut for time because it was just, it was so in depth, like things that you would see on the walls, on shelves, and how people looked and acted. Like, it was just a, it was, it was, I, I can't imagine if it was filmed, like, how long that would take for them to actually get to headquarters, but it was supposed to be a lot longer. <laughs> there was a scene with Gareth on the phone talking to the Master Oracle. We never actually would see the Master Oracle, but it would be just him on the phone saying, yes, Master Oracle, I understand. We will do this and do this and that. You know, And then it sort of goes right into the scene where Cadmus uh, comes in and says, we've got to do something more drastic with Samson. Right. Uh, so just a little bit more. When they slid out uh, from the incinerator, they actually were supposed to slide into a big, lush meadow, which I guess they probably just decided, well, we got the... You know, we got this back lot here. We might as well use this or whatever instead of trying to find a meadow. It's like a 
Chinatown exactly. alleyway yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. Now, the coolest thing, which I wish they had kept in, and this, this reminds me of when Arturo was uh, acting as a lawyer and he had that whole big speech that he uh, was going to do um, trying to defend Remy way back in season one. I think it was season one, season two, whatever. Cadmus, his speech at the end was a lot longer and uh, it, it went into more about how they don't want to forbid oracle belief. They just want to, you know, they want to return freedom of speech to the people. They want a return to the Constitution where no government is above the people but must be of the people. It was, it was a lot. It was, it was a big reference to the Constitution, basically, that they, they didn't put in there, which I thought that would be a nice thing to, to like, cap the episode off with because, you know, separation of church and state and everything, mm. that's what they were kind of referring to. And that was, that was a cool uh, speech that he had. And if you want to read that speech, of course, Dimension of Continuity.com. Go over there. My friends and co-workers in the way of the Oracle, the signs of the end times are all around us. The confusion that you may be feeling today as you see the unrest increase has been foreseen by the Master Oracle. Change is painful, but we know the rewards that come of endurance and of steadfast faith. Today, we are sending two very special groups of welcomers to that reward. See you on the other side. Jane, you gotta listen to us. No, you must trust the Oracle. Maybe she's right. We'll certainly find out soon enough. Traverse of the Welcomers. All right, so let's get into our discussion of profits and loss. All right. Something that doesn't happen very often. They slide into this world and are immediately seen by somebody. Right. <laughs> and we find out this, this guy is Cadmus, and he yes. makes a phone call and uh, alerts somebody to what he's witnessed, pretty much, mm -hmm. you know? And... I think this was pretty cool, you know, because you just assume, because of who we learn who he is, that he's calling officials and, and telling them. But as right. the episode goes on, you're thinking, why is nobody making reference to the fact that these people, quite possibly to their eyes, have returned from the other side? Right, right, right. Nobody brings it up, nor uh, none of the officials. It's not brought up until later with uh, Samson and the Rad Rats. Mm -hmm. And that's when you start to think, uh something's going on here so i thought it was a good initial setup and uh mm -hmm. and and how that information unfolded across the episode was pretty good and uh you know we end up learning about uh what they call the way of the oracle yes and how they send people what they call welcomers through a portal or you know they traverse to the next world in order to prepare it for everyone's arrival so it's like saying like uh, I guess, you know, in the new world or in heaven or something, you know, we will prepare for the righteous or whatever. Right. You know, exactly. it's, it's it's kind of like a, a, a Catholic like belief, but sort of subverted in a way. Well, now, two things that I want to know related to this. First, where did they come up with the idea for a portal? You know, I mean, it looks just like the Vortex. Why? How did they come up with that idea? And does Gareth, you know, the guy in charge there, does he actually know that it's not a portal, that it's an incinerator, or not? I'm not too sure, really. No. I mean, we find out later that, of course, they're extorting money from people. Yes. You know, the welcomers are told that they have to turn over all their earthly belongings to the way of the Oracle mm -hmm. uh, before they traverse. So, yeah, it, it kind of does seem like it's just one big scam Yeah. in order to get money out of people and then kill them seriously like did they ever think that they would never be caught for this right yeah and they don't even really get into the repercussions of it by the end of the episode they they do go into that whole thing about you know returning freedom and voting to the people not having the whole world controlled by this nazi-like religion that has taken yeah. over uh, yeah, no actual discussion of the fact that they've been killing people for God knows how long. I know, and I'm just—that's why I'm wondering, like, how, like, 
who like I, just, I can't imagine like they said well we'll just we'll, we'll make this image this this uh hologram or whatever this video of a, a vortex and then we'll just incinerate them like <laughs> where is that like who was the guy who came up with that idea i'm like man and i did notice that they were careful to have gareth operate the traversing machine mm. it was never cadmus because by the end we're supposed to sympathize with him because he is a rad rat collaborator exactly to bring down the way of the oracle so yeah i don't know i i have a feeling that gareth did know that makes him a whole lot like just evil you know like a lot more evil than than you think like if he didn't know like, I, I I could see myself, part of it, I was like, oh, he seems like an okay guy when he arrests them. He's he's kind of not being too mean to him. I'm like, maybe he's okay. But if he's, if he's you know, really, if he knows about that, then he's willingly, you know, he's knowingly committing murder. It's like, whoa, you know? It's very, it's dark, you know? It's a little dark. It really is. You know, they get into what the way of the Oracle is. And it is that whole thing of, like, we're right and everybody else is wrong. Because yep. they've got what they call the demon Darwin. Uh, Darwin existed on this world, probably came out with his theories of evolution and you know all the mm -hmm. stuff that Darwin came up with. And they kind of like threw him aside and said that he's completely wrong, we're right, and you're not allowed to disagree with us. Because if you disagree with us, then we will take you for chemical reconfig. Exactly. Or brainwashing. We brainwash you into believing what we believe. And they can probably get away with it too because they've amassed so much money from people willing their money and belongings oh, yeah. to the church. I mean, they get rid of people like an assembly like every day. I mean, it's uh, there must. I think there's more than one assembly a day, and it's they probably have assemblies in other you know other uh, cities as well. So they probably have a ton of money. Yeah. Well, because Gareth himself. He describes himself as the chief oracle, right? Uh, and that means that he's kind of the head of the way of the oracle for, I guess, the Los Angeles district. Exactly. But there is a prime oracle who is the head of it. And yes. when they're getting into this, I was thinking of that uh, psychic world. Yes. <laughs> Because <laughs> they refer to them as oracles and prime oracle and all that stuff. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Because we got we got the prime oracle, and then we also got a Gareth again, and we had a Gareth back in the dragon episode, the dragon right. slide episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you know, also not, not to to throw back to even more episodes, the their their stance on like scientists in this world reminds me of the stance of the uh, the world that was anti technology as well. Yeah, yeah, very true. So they're kind of melding all these previous ideas into. Uh, mm -hmm into a single episode. I do love the point that you brought up here because they're walking away after the assembly and there's mm -hmm. a guy getting arrested. Yes. <laughs> and Quinn does nothing. He does nothing. It's like, that's good on you, Quinn. That's good. That's what you're supposed to do. Let the police do their job. You don't know what the rule is. You don't know what they did. Let it go. <laughs> it is a bit of an odd scene, though, because they kind of like cross the road there. And in the background, <laughs> there's this guy getting arrested. <laughs> and they kind of look over their shoulder and have no reaction to it at all. I know. Like, at the very least, you'd be like, oh, man, like, there's a dude over there getting arrested. <laughs> right, right. But no, they just keep walking. No reaction. Maybe they've actually, they finally learned their lesson. They're like, okay, no, just keep moving. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it. Not dealing with it. You know, unlike on the Egyptian world where they got the timer, they decide that they want to go and check out the equipment right. that uh, they believe to be sliding equipment sending them to a new world. Of course, they find out that it's not that at all. It's just a huge incinerator. I think, like, for this whole part, I, I really wondered, like, why did Remy and Maggie have to go? There's, they cannot really help at all except from being, like, lookouts, really. You know, like, Quinn really should have gone by himself. It would have been safer. And they still could have gotten uh, way, or Wade, oh, I miss Wade. They, they could have gotten Maggie and uh, Remy into the, the whole story another way, I think, rather than just have them tag along with the, you know, the scientist guy. I was like, mm, well, you know. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Quinn looks at the equipment. All Remy does is find ashes. Yeah, which Quinn could have, they could have had Quinn do that, you know? Yeah. He could have easily found that. And then and Maggie this was is, just a lookout. Right, exactly. This is where, you know, they started talking in this episode about how he needs to, you know, he wants to find that out because maybe he'll find something that can help him configure the timer to go to his brother's 
uh, world coordinates, which I, I thought right. was weird because I just assumed that he could just put them in there. Like I thought, oh, he got his coordinates from the last episode. He'll just put them in there and they'll go find them. But it, it's like a whole big to do, I guess. Yeah, it is because we know that um, Maggie's husband had reconfigured the timer to track wormholes mm-hmm. and store coordinates. So right. since it stores coordinates, then why doesn't it have the ability to be able to input those coordinates right. to go I to mean, where you want to go? I reason maybe they have to actually go to a world to store the coordinates. That's how I reasoned it. You know, yeah. Ahead. So. It doesn't seem like it should be that hard for him to reconfigure it to no. input coordinates. <laughs> it doesn't. Especially mm. if he's able to fix it on the fly to track, you know, the, the mm. wormholes when it was broken. So, but it's all right. We, we go with it. <laughs> yeah. But they're arrested, of course, and they're taken to see Gareth. And they have this really long, awkward conversation with Gareth <laughs> and Cadmus. Mm-hmm. And it's all about getting to understanding their level of transgression here. Yeah, because it's it starts major. off and Gareth is like super nice. Hey, have you been to Oracle World? <laughs> exactly. And it's just, it goes on for like five minutes. Right? Yeah, it's a long scene. But at the same time, I'm really enjoying the scene, you know. It kind of just mm-hmm. builds to that level where suddenly they realize what they've done is worthy of the death penalty. Yeah, it's really bad. So, um, I, yeah, I really dug this scene. They weren't afraid to just let it play out instead mm-hmm. of just sort of, you know, trying to, hey, you're guilty, so we're going to kill you, off we go, one-minute scene, you know? Just let okay. it play it out. It was beautiful. Well, yeah, because I thought they were going to get away. I think they were going to be fine. Like, they're, oh, it's no big deal, da 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 But no, oh, it's a big deal. It's a very yeah, big deal. Yeah, and they get thrown in a cell. And I think we get the most full-on exposition extra ever. <laughs> this yeah. dude, who they don't even really talk to, no, just starts really talking about like what chemical reconfigures and how terrible it is. <laughs> yeah, he's very upset by it. He's very upset by it. Yeah, and he looks—he actually looks like one of the bikers from the, uh, the first episode. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought it was a, it was a super full on like monologue for an exposition. Oh, it extra. was. It was. He sells it. <laughs> he he sells does. It really good. Yeah, I bought it. Those lessons paid off, Biker Man. But of course, Maggie's in like a separate cell, you know, yes. separating men and women when they go to jail. And Jane comes to visit her, and this mm-hmm. is where she, you know, she tells her all about becoming a welcomer and and you know, willing all her assets and money to the uh, way yeah. of the Oracle. Um, suspect much? Yeah. I mean, come on. Like, come <laughs> how do, on, really? Yeah, how do people, yeah, how do people not know what the way of the Oracle is doing? <laughs> this is exactly. ridiculous. These people are idiots. Well, I mean, that's that comes up a little bit in the uh, the messages in time as well. How it's just that when you, when you believe, you know, you just mm-hmm. you're full on. You know, it's like you just it's. I mean, you might call it brainwashing, and this this episode was supposed to be like a whole. From what I understand, what I saw was supposed to be like a comment on back then with the religious right and all this, and just yeah. So that's how some some people like that's all they they they're very religious and they want to convert you, and if you don't think you know the same way they do that you're going to hell you know you don't believe in my god you're going to hell and it's like i, I don't know <laughs> not for me yeah but there's always a resistance and mm. uh at the beginning of the episode they sort of mention that there's this rationalist party right um interesting that they call them rationalists <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> i kind of like exactly. that you know <laughs> these people are rational thinkers uh yep. they also refer to them as rats uh, mm-hmm. But then you've got another sub-level of the rationalists called the rad rats or radical yeah. rationalists. The more extreme. So it's something we've seen before in sliders, you know, yes. oppressed people having their uh, resistance fighters. So why not? Let's go with it. I got to say, is there a way? There's got to be a way. <laughs> There's got to be a way to do alternate history without having a resistance because we we have it all the time we had it in last episode with the chromags we had a resistance and now we have it again here we had it like in the first two or three you know episodes of the whole series it's like there's always a resistance <laughs> always um but i like their leader samson he's pretty cool you know who samson is samson is trip tucker from the uh, the Enterprise, I've, that's oh, I haven't watched Enterprise. Yeah, <laughs> the the guy who plays Trip Tucker is the same guy who plays Samson. Oh, there you go. Yeah, anybody who listened to our um, Star Trek film series rewatch knows I haven't gotten all the way along in the actual series outside of um, the original and uh, Next Gen. Next Gen. So yeah, I'll get there one day. <laughs> 
And I'll be like, oh, yeah, there's that guy that uh, Tom told me about that time. <laughs> exactly. Trip Tucker. Trip Tucker. <laughs> but Samson, you know, he knows all about how they arrived. So, you know, dropping that little thing about, you know, Cadmus probably told the Brad Rats and not the uh, mm -hmm. the Oracle officials. And Quinn offers up some scientific knowledge to, uh, you know, in exchange for helping them get the timer back because, of course, Gareth has that. The timer is in peril. The timer stolen trope. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we've got resistances and we've got the timer stolen trope. Yeah. I liked how smug Quinn was, though, when he says, you know, oh, I saw this guy doing that thing over there. Um, you know, I'm not saying I know exactly what Quinn was talking about, but right. <laughs> he just stares down at Samson. And he says, yeah, well, that guy was doing it wrong. So you know, <laughs> we could help you. <laughs> exactly. And um, they get captured again. 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 By Cadmus, too. This is what I thought was weird because... You know, I was trying to remember the episode, and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure Cadmus is the good guy who's going to help them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he captures them in the first place and right. uh, says, well, you know, how about we let them traverse? We'll make them welcomers instead right. of giving them the death penalty. And then he offers up the timer for them to uh, to use. Escape. So I, I was a bit like, well, you know, why did he capture them in the first place if he was trying to help them? Exactly. But you know, I guess at the same time, it's a, probably a fine line of him trying to remain undercover with mm -hmm. the Oracle yeah. and help the Rad Rats at the same time. So right. I, I can let it go. But then he just decides to come out at the very end anyway. You know, mm, like he reveals yeah. himself to be the, the guy, you know, behind the scenes. That's true. But at that point, they had uh, traversed and right. then come back. So I guess at that Samson point, was yeah, um, Samson is going to be revered. But they make poor Jane traverse first. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> she's gone. Yeah, I mean, I don't care too much about Maggie's reaction to it. They give her a close-up of, oh, Jane. Oh. Right. I'm like, ah, whatever, Maggie, I don't care. <laughs> but uh, actually, I felt pretty bad for Jane. I was just like, oh, yeah. man, they kill her off first. But yeah, you know, so they, they slide, they come back, and they offer up this whole thing about, you know, we'll put it out to the people, fair voting and stuff like that. Yes, you know, we can't have exactly. everybody... Uh, believing the way of the oracle and it's not like it's not like they're saying to get rid of the oracle they just want it to be equal you know exactly. they don't want it to be yeah so Let's that, bring that's it back a, to freedom of thing. speech the oracle exactly. is oppressing us and we have the right to to be free and believe whatever we want mm -hmm. so that was pretty good you know throughout the whole episode samson was quoting people and who knows if the quotes were right it doesn't even matter because they're on a parallel right world exactly but yeah you know it came to a fair conclusion of you know we're not going to do what the oracle did we're not going to be those people we're just going to open it up and let there be an open forum and let people vote for whatever they want it's a cool message how are they going to handle what they've got i think we started some kind of revolution it's bound to happen we just nudged it along it's their world they're gonna to have to deal with it Thomas Jefferson once said that politics is like the weather. Every so often you need a good storm to clear things out. You're not going to start quoting now, are you? Who's Thomas Jefferson? Big man in my world. Got his face on some of the money. Okay, well, let's get into some messages in time. Okay, starting with Profits and Loss, a lot of people were talking about how they were glad to see David Burney, who played Cadmus, uh, back again, um, even though Meredith divorced him. I guess they're big Meredith Baxter Burney fans. I, I, did, <laughs> I didn't even know that he was, David Burney was an actor. No. Nope. So, yeah, they were, they were happy with that, to see David Burney again. I didn't know he had gone away. There you go. Um, they had said, boy, he has great hair, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he was um, he was fine. Yeah. Now this is something that we had mentioned about a little bit as well that the uh, elements of this show seemed cobbled together from other episodes. You know, like they were took a little bit from here, a little bit from there, and just kind of made like a new episode out of all these little parts and pieces, which mm -hmm. um, they guessed maybe was to start fresh for like a lot of new viewers who hadn't seen those old episodes. So sort of like you know do a little version of what had come before. Right. Just a little taste to get you involved. Yeah. There was there was one particular poster who was livid about this episode because I guess he was extremely religious and uh, he said, you know, this episode attacks the religious right and it, he was calling out the sponsor for the episode, Propecia, I guess. I don't even know what Propecia is, but it was he was calling out the, the sponsor for allowing this episode on the air and how the final solution mentioned was akin to Hitler's final solution against the Jews and 
you know, very offended by the whole thing. And like people were like, what, what's the deal, man? Relax. You know, then the, the, there was an atheist who responded to him that said, you know, the poster, you know, you're, you're doing the own thing. You're doing the same thing. You are trying to censor, you know, what they're trying to say in this, in this episode. So like, just settle down, allow, allow it to air. It doesn't matter if you agree with it or not. It's someone's opinion. You know, it was a whole long thing that I, I saw on the, uh, the, uh, the old boards there. And I was like, wow, it's, it's crazy. And the guy was like, you know, I find televangelists offensive, but I don't write letters to the sponsors. I just move on. It's, you know, it's like, oh, it's also yeah. the irony that this guy's writing this on a, uh, public forum message board on the internet (laughs) exactly now uh let's see we got messages in time for uh genesis and they said you know what this was a great opener there was some continuity with invasion feels like it's back on form again you know they felt Cyrus was back on form uh there was a girl who posted and said you know i just told my boyfriend let's just pretend this is some new show so we won't be coming into it with expectations i think that's the best way to approach the the next two seasons really People were sad that his mom got left with the mags. Quinn's mom was left with the crow mags. Mm. Uh, someone else mentioned, like I had said, about the tracking device being in way to Remy. Remy said that he had never, hardly never went to jail before Quinn. So they were saying, man, I wonder what, wonder what Remy went to jail with or went to jail uh, for before because he said he hardly ever, you know, went to jail. So that, that's a, that would be an interesting story to hear about in the future, why he was in jail before. Yeah, it was a funny um, line yeah. too. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. They said, as they do, Woo Woo, or Danger Bunny, seems to have taken some acting classes because she actually wasn't bad. Wow, I actually said something nice about Captain Silicone. That was the, <laughs> the quote oh, wow. from the post. Um, someone said, you know what? I miss Wade, I miss Arturo, and I miss Remy's mustache. <laughs> yeah, Rest then. in peace, Remy's mustache. Rest in peace, yes. I don't know if it comes back. Does it come back? I don't, I don't remember. Someone else said, hey, it's Cal L. Mallory, like what I I said about this whole Superman thing. They they agreed. It looked like you know the Superman costumes and the hologram and all. Yeah. This was a good point made by someone who said, you know what, Quinn should have taken down that Manta ship with the timer like he did in Invasion. All right, yeah, it's a good point. He did <laughs> Why it before. Not? Why can't he do it again? <laughs> Uh, a lot of people wanted to see that, quote, future world from the end of season three. They they thought that it would be neat to see that. They were hoping it was going to be continued, but it wasn't, so they were disappointed. Yeah, it didn't pick um, up where exactly yeah, they left off. Exactly. Um, they didn't like Quinn being uh, – some people did, but a lot of people didn't like Quinn being from another dimension. They'd rather he be from Earth Prime. Yeah, it is awfully convenient. Yeah. They did like Maggie's attitude now. She's not as harsh as she used to be. And then someone said, well, at least it isn't on Fox. <laughs> that's a plus. <laughs> if that's the best thing you have to say, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, someone was saying that the cro mags seemed akin to Nazis because the uniforms, they looked like they were taken from, like, the Hogan Heroes uh, closet on stage or something like that. All right. So, yeah, it was, you know, that's that's about it. All right. So uh, messages from Earth Prime. So, yeah, they were talking on uh, – we got an email from uh, iReactions over at the Sliders.tv uh, yes, forums. Yes, he said, hey, you know, would you guys, along with the Sliders cast, would you guys like to be uh, on the actual website, earthprime.com? We're like, yeah, let's get us over there. You know, that, it's a great resource. You know, it's uh, the earthprime.com and dimensionofcontinuity.com are two sites that I use when I'm getting my uh, synopsis together and my, you know, my uh, research on the episode. That's where I go to those two sites as well. So there, Earth Prime, definitely a lot of information there. It's great to be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. We're being archived. Yeah, that's yes. that's great. Official really great. sliders merch. Yeah. <laughs> Officially unofficial sliders. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a little bit of talk on the forums about my rendition, my acoustic tears in my fro. People are are pleased with it. They, they ah, liked it. And I'm I loved glad. it. <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> fun. It was, it was fun amazing. To do. Yeah, it was fun. And I think, like I said, if anybody comes see me out here in Phoenix, request that song. I'll know that you listen to the podcast and yeah. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, we got a tweet too from um, at Alex Slider on, uh, on Twitter. You know, since we're going into uh, season four and we talked last week about what happened with the timer, that, right. uh, you know, Jensen's timer, uh, the real Rickman's timer. What happened to that? And they haven't brought it up. And he says, oh, wait, Archibald Chandler uses it in his chess game. And uh, and then he put a reference picture for an upcoming episode where they right, I see. run into a hologram of 
Chandler at the Chandler Hotel. And right, right, right. <laughs> his little control kind of looks like the timer. Yeah. That's yep. Right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he does make a good point. Where, where is that timer? I don't think they're ever going to bring it up. There's one more that I forgot to I, I talked to you about it. You had asked about uh, if we had any reviews on the uh, the American iTunes, and I hadn't even thought to, to look, and I looked. And, guys, we have one. We, we have, have one, one review on the, on the American <laughs> iTunes. I was surprised. I'm like, we don't have more than that. We only have one. And it was from <laughs> like April of like this year, which is months ago. So we'd love, we'd, we'd love to have some more on there. I mean, she really liked it. Uh, or I don't even know if it's she or he, but whoever posted, uh, well, I, it was I Maggie, I think was the name of the, uh, the, the poster said mm-hmm. that, uh, it's a, it's a good reason to rewatch an old favorite. They said about the, uh, the podcast. So I'm glad, I'm glad she likes it. I Maggie, <laughs> but we need some more. You know, I just suddenly thought, Oh, you know, maybe we could bring all those, uh, nice reviews in and, and put them in our messages from S prime segment. Cause we have to have a <laughs> bunch of them for by now. Right? No. no yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all right. We still like you guys, but you we know. do. <laughs> feel free to, you know, feel free to do some more. Yeah, that'd be nice. Oh. Well, anyway, with this, uh, with this, I, I, you know what, I, I did enjoy these two episodes. I really, I, it, it's not the same sliders that we're used to, but it's definitely a, a closer return to the form than we've had in season three. It's true. Yeah, maybe this season won't be too bad. We'll get through it nicely. I hope. I have high hopes. <laughs> you know, it's never going to be this, the same as, as when we had the, you know, our quartet, but it's, you know, it's not bad. And uh, we'll see as we go along. I'm seriously interested in finding out, like, how far into the season it takes for them to bring in Colin Mallory. I, c- <laughs> I cannot remember any of these episodes. It's ridiculous. Right. But uh, yeah. next week, the two episodes we'll be discussing are Common Ground and Virtual Slide. And I couldn't tell you anything about either of them. I don't nope. remember. Nope, don't remember. <laughs> well, we'll find out next week, but that's it for this episode of the Rewatch Podcast. Keep up with listener interaction by liking our Facebook page at facebook.com slash rewatchpodcast and follow the show on Twitter at rewatchpod. You can visit our webpage at rewatchpodcast.podomatic.com, which has some of our favorite links there, such as dimensionofcontinuity.com, Earth prime.com and the active forum over at sliders.tv and remember you can always write us an email or record a voice message and send it to the rewatch podcast at gmail.com and like we were saying if you've enjoyed the show please consider giving us a rate and review on itunes and give us a five-star review and you can say hey those guys are awesome and maybe we'll even read out those reviews in our messages yes. from our prime segment it helps out the show and, and like i said you know we put out an episode every week for you guys for free and yeah. if you could just take a minute out of your day to Head over to iTunes. Give us a, a rate and review. That yeah, would we've be been very so consistent awesome. about that too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're good. We're good like that. Yeah, you owe us. <laughs> <laughs> you guys better do it. Let me tell you right now. You come over there. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm too busy to come over there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Not enough hours in the day. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks for joining me, Tom. Yep. And I would just say, until next time, stay with me, man. Things might get a little weird. We got to slide. The Rewatch Podcast is not associated with NBC Universal, St. Clair Entertainment, Fox, or Sci Fi Channel. The use of any and all copyrighted material is only for parody, news analysis, critique, or educational purposes, as provided in United States Code Title 17, aka Fair Use. Music provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Copyright 2015, The Rewatch Podcast.